Good morning, welcome to Working Horses with Jim. Today we're gonna to be doing some different chores around the farm and we'd love to have you come along with us. Jim is going to be hitching up Duke for the very first time to the manure spreader with Ken. So we'll see how that goes. And um, you never know what's gonna happen in a day around here. We have been enjoying above normal temperatures. As you can see, we have no snow. Down at Paul Smith's, where Jim's logging, there is snow. But here, just a half hour, 45 minutes away, as you can see, we don't have any. But, um, and we don't think we're gonna for Christmas either. But time will tell. Anyways, um, if you haven't subscribed to our videos uh, ever, would you consider doing so? And if you do, like this video, could you give us a thumbs up? Thanks for coming along today. Get, 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 So how's everybody doing this morning? It's a, I think Brenda's already told you. It sure is a beautiful day outside today. And we're gonna try Duke on the manure spreader, first time ever. Hopefully it'll go smooth. It's always a little bit scary for horses on the manure spreader, just like the mow machine. It's something that when you're kicking gear, it makes a noise. So this is what we're gonna to have to deal with today. And uh, hopefully it'll go all right. Before I get started though, I have to swap the lines around because the last time I used both of these guys, they were on the opposite side is the way I want to have them today. So because of that, the lines have to be swapped, which is just a matter of unhitching one side and throwing on that side and unhitching the other side and going the opposite way. I could, if I wanted to, take the lines completely out and use his lines for Ken and Ken's lines for, for Duke, but it's not necessary. Just swapping them side to side will work just fine. The reason I'm doing this 
is because I've talked about this before in other videos. It's so important that you teach your horses to be able to drive and work on either side. And so the last couple times I used Duke, he was on the um, on the right hand side and I want him on the left hand side today. Another reason for that is um, I'm going to have him tied to the truck body and I want to be able to have Ken pull him away after we lower the manure spreader, pull him, pull him away from the truck body which is the easiest way to do it. You might be wondering why in the last few videos that I've had um, Duke working and you haven't seen Earl working for a while now. And uh, there's really no reason for it, except for I'm kind of on a roll with Duke. So I decided I'm just gonna continue being on that roll and get him more used to driving and doing these new things. Um, I am soon gonna start again with Earl, but I just, there's just so much, only so much time um, in a day and a, and a week that I can do these things. I'm logging most of the time, you know, so I, I just only have a limited amount of time to be working with these colts. So we'll get the bridle on Duke and get him out. I also uh, I'm assuming probably some of you guys are saying, well, why don't I use Baron? Because I used him last time with Duke. And I must say, it was tempting to do that. But uh, it's safest being the first time on the manure spreader to use Ken. And uh, hopefully, hopefully the next time I hitch up Duke, to the manure spreader. If things go well today, then I will use um, do. I mean, I will use Baron with him. I know. Recently, someone commented that they're having a difficult time telling these horses apart. Well, I have somewhat of a difficult time telling them apart myself. I also have a somewhat difficult time putting the right name to the right horse. We have seven horses. That's seven names. And to me, that is a challenge to be able to get the right name to the right horse. So if it seems like I'm hesitating before I say a horse's name is because I'm thinking to make sure I say the right name. And, and over time, you've probably heard me say the wrong name on these horses quite often. have quite a number of things today that we'd like to show and share with you guys but I'm not even gonna say what they are because who knows if we'll actually get to that but, but, but. when I'm working horses on this side on a regular basis, I always tie my lines right here on the inside so I can easily grab them. But since they were opposite sides last time, the lines aren't here, they're over here. So often some of these little things just make it so much easier to deal with, oh my goodness. I am so wrong, how come I'm wrong? So, when you have a horse on your left side like this, you want the long extended line to go to the outside. And the shorter line, it's actually not shorter compared to this line from the buckle, but 
overall, this is where the buckle hitches and that goes to the opposite horse. You want this on the inside. So did I or did not just swap sides? Mm -hmm. And I have it just the opposite of the way it should be. This long line should be over there. So why is that? I don't know why that is. I must have swapped them the last time I used that harness and I can't even remember. Doesn't matter, it's wrong. I've got to fix that. Did this, you use Earl, but I, not in this? I haven't used Earl or, for quite a while. Yeah, but the last time you did work, anybody at home? But this is the same harness I would have used on Duke from just a couple days ago. And Duke, oh, that's right, Duke was on this side. That's right, because I had, I had, uh, uh, he was on this side, because with Baron, he was on this side. Mm -hmm. That's what it okay. was. So, anyways. Those are things you could constantly be thinking about and making sure you have them right, because if I head out with the lines all messed up, everything's going to be all messed up. I think as I get older, and probably some of you guys can relate to me. My memory just is not quite like it used to be. I know Brenda can't relate to that. Yeah, I can relate to that. Okay. About myself. So, that looks better. And another thing I've gotta always look at is my holes in my lines for the adjustments. Cause who knows what happened the last time I used these guys. And so even now, before I even get going, I'm going to adjust this one back so it's even. I try to keep all my lines the same so all these holes are, are, are in the same spot so I can, when I adjust them, they're all the same. So now you see I have a hole there, hole there, hole there, hole there. So there's two holes back here. And there's more up there, but uh, these are what I'm going by. What is this again? This is just a, if for some reason uh, Ken was to go way ahead of him, he couldn't pull this buckle. See, if this big thing wasn't here, this buckle could possibly be pulled through that ring, and then I'd never be able to pull back on it. So that's just there for a safety thing. Generally, when I'm working at home, I don't bother using those things um, because they're they're really not much of a nuisance, but still, I don't really need them at home but, um, or in, in just normal situations. But when I have a Colt like this, it's really good to have it. Although I don't have it on the other line, so it's really not going to help me a lot. Because if Baron was to take off, he still could pull that buckle through the ring. And Ken is not too apt to because he's just not that type of a horse. Anyways, Brenda, if you could go up there and open up the door and unhitch... Duke, we will see about driving them over to the spreader. Okay. Got stuff. Did you happen to notice the temperature this morning, Brenda? It's close to 40, I think. Even early this morning. Okay, Brenda, I'm gonna need, have to, probably need some help here. Yep. Yep. Back. 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 Bye, bye, bye. If you could just go to to Duke's nose and push him backwards. Bye. 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 Back up here. Bye. Bye. G, 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 G. G, careful. Oh. Oh. I right, do again. Back up here. 
Back up here. Do be, do de. Back up here. Back. Back up. Oh, good boy. Yeah. Ho, ho. Okay, just hold him good. Ho. The reason I'm I'm needing the help here. I mean, a couple of reasons, but um, of course he's not used to this and he's not fully trained. But also, we're in a kind of a tight spot here and I don't want to get run over while I'm in there. So having somebody to hold Duke is kind of important just for safety purposes. Back up, Duke. Back up, Duke. Back up, Dookie. Yeah. He's good? Fine. He's good. I just gotta hit you. Okay. Okay. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, 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 oh. Careful, careful. Be, be careful. This is actually two going to be two firsts today. Um, this is actually I didn't realize it till just now. This is actually the first time we've ever put Duke on a cart. Oh, really? The only time we've had him hitched up was to my big sled. Oh. So I mean, this is great, and he's doing great. Um, as you can see over there, William's been splitting up that big pile of big pile of elm that I had, and as you can see, he's splitting it pretty big because it's splitting so hard. Those chunks that he has scattered around that are upright, point at the ones that are upright, Brenda, yeah. Um, they, my poor little split, splitter won't, won't even split them. So I'll have to take a chainsaw and cut down through them part way and then hopefully I'll pop them open. So anyways, that's what we're doing. So now I'm going to just go to the truck body, but I want to start putting in gear and all I'm gonna do is put the beaters or the bed chain and gear and just go a little ways and then put the next thing in gear. So we'll see how it goes. So I guess I'm gonna put the ho, the bed, ho, 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 ho. The bed chain and gear, ho, ho. Careful, stout, careful. Oh, oh, well that was good, real good. So I, I waited till this point before I put the beaters in gear because we have our wagon here behind Brenda. This is an old, not old, but well, yeah, it's getting pretty old wagon that I use for rides once in a while. And, and I, we've got some rides this weekend and it's in dire need of, of a redo on this wagon, but um, uh, actually not this weekend, but next. But um, I don't think we're gonna have snow, so we'll probably have to use the wagon. So we dug that out and got that out and to do a little work on that before the wagon is ready to be used for people. So now I'm going to put the, I'll keep the bed chain going because that doesn't make much noise. That didn't bother him. 
But now I'm gonna put the beaters in gear and that could bow them. But as you can see, I'm kind of headed right towards the truck body. So hopefully if they did run, they'd just run to the truck body and we should be fine. All right, careful step, careful. Never done this, never been on the car or anything. He did great. He did great. So now we'll get loaded up and see how he does when it's actually got manure in it. I'm only gonna put one big bucket load of manure in there and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. So I wanted to park them here because now uh, I can just, Ken will just pull him right out of here and we'll go right around the loop again and go out to the field. I generally park them over there closer in this cement there so I can clean up any manure that I waste, but it's just, it's just better right now to leave them right here. And I'll tie Duke. Have... Last time you tied both of them. You're not going to do that? I don't normally tie Ken. I know. Maybe it was, I forget who it was, but you tied them both. It was probably Baron and Earl. Probably. Yeah. Okay, so as you can see in here, we just have one bucket. I usually, on a big full loads, there'll be three buckets. But uh, this is how I always do it when I start off Colts. Uh, last, not too long ago, I started bearing on spread manure. And there again, one bucket was all we took for a little while until they get used to it. It's so nice to be at least Accomplishing something while you're training horses. <clears throat> Cast out. Oh, no. I can't stop.
All right. Oh, okay, so as you see, could see, I actually kept the spreader going all the way. Normally, I would just shut it off back there, um, but I need to have Duke hear more of this spreader so he gets more and more used to it, so it's just never an issue. I thought he did extremely, extremely good. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed it, but my, the horse's heads were kind of pulled together a little bit. Um, so my giant lines are adjusted just a little bit wrong. So I'm actually going to slide those center lines ahead, which will spread their heads out a little bit. So um, I'll do that small little detail and then I'll go get a load and then we'll go on to something new. It's not a lot in there, but I think it's enough for a load. Oh. All right, stop. Ah, 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 Careful. Oh, oh. Okay, so I am done spreading with Duke for today. He did super great, did just two loads, but that's okay. Um, that's enough. Um, we are not going to be able to back the spreader in to the barn. Um, even if it was back into the other old spot that I usually back into, he's not ready to do that yet. Um, so we're just going to unhitch here and I'll have to take the skid steer and push this, the, the, push the winter spreader back in place. Okay, Brenda, if you could hold them, that'd be great.
Just hold it. Step up. Just up. Oh. Ho, ho. Oh, back up here. Ho, ah, ho. Ho. Yesterday, because of this weather, the horses have been going out into the mud and rolling, and Brenda's been having a terrible time trying to keep them clean. Okay, come here. Can can enough. Hey guys, I'm down in the cabin right at the moment and I wanted to show you the drainage tile and the drainage that we um, worked on this late fall. And uh, I had told you I was going to show it and then on another video then I never got to it. So anyways, here's our pond where we did a lot of, um, actually expanded the size of this pond quite a bit. And I want to show you the drainage on the back side first. So the water comes from that ditch right there from the field and comes down through here. It fills the pond, 
but when the pond is full, we have it set up with this culvert, so the overflow will go out through this culvert and continue down this stream right here. And as you can see, there is a lot of water coming through here. It's not, it's not all from the field, of course, but just from the woods that come down through here and then continue down this little stream, which was hardly anything though, before we put the tile in. So I will go show you the end of the tile pipe where a portion of this water is coming from. This is December 16th. And that just reminds me, that's my brother's birthday. Happy birthday, Sonny. But anyways, it's fairly warm. There's a little bit of ice on the pond, but uh, the temperature is warmed up quite well with this sun. Before the end of the day, the ice will probably be completely off the pond. So we are not in very good shape for sleigh rides and ice skating on the pond. But that's just the way it goes some years. In some years, we're given sleigh rides even by now. But that's okay. Whatever the weather we have, we'll just kind of work around it. So here we are at the other end of the ditch. And here is the main tile coming out of the field. There's quite a lot of water still, or some water still coming from that ditch up there, but the tile itself is right here, which is kind of surprising. I thought there'd be even more water than this today. A few days ago, we had a pretty heavy rain and that tire was almost, well, it was three quarters full. I don't know if you can see this guys, but there's a frog down there. So anyways, I've been pretty pleased so far with the tiling that we had done. We'll know a lot better next summer as we go through the crop season. We finally got our drone back. It had to have some repairs. So I decided to take, up, take you guys up on a little bit of a tour of the farm. I had come in here hoping I could get a close up of the tile, but as I got close to the ground with the drone, I decided I better not be foolish and break it again. So I didn't stay down too low for too long. But this is the outlet of the tile coming out of the field, going down to our pond. From this view, you can really see how the tile is laid out in our field. This end of the field has not been anything been done to it, of course. I have got a fair amount plowed though, just the same. And it's very interesting to see, even after I plowed from the air, the marks from the tile. They're still very clear. Although it plowed beautiful and you hardly know there's tile there. But it's really kind of neat to see from the air. So today was a day to work Ken and Duke and they did so well. But all the rest of the horses have been outside all day. So why don't we go and see if we can find them and see what they're up to. So here we have Earl and Baron and Bree. They're locked in the barnyard for the day and with all the wet weather, of course, that we've had, as you can see, especially on Earl, the mud 
and the dried dirt that's caked on him. It's pretty bad at times. But they're enjoying the sunlight. They tend to stand against the barn there. I think they get more sun rays against the barn and they enjoy that. So Lady and Bill get the day off from logging. So here they are out in this other pasture by themselves. His lady. And here's Bill. So let's have another quick fly over the farm. I hope you've enjoyed this video. You guys have a great day and we'll see you next time.